Live from Schellenberger Field for one last time in this year's regular season, you are watching Lynchburg and ODAC women's lacrosse, where today it is the visitors from Washington and Lee, Lexington, Virginia, coming to play. Folks, they sport one of the longest and most impressive streaks in all of the country. That would be 98 straight ODAC victories. That is the mountain that your Lynchburg Hornets will try to climb today if they are able to pull off an upset. Hope everybody's doing all right on a rainy Saturday afternoon. I am Sam Graham, excited to take you through one more regular season Lynchburg women's lacrosse home contest. This one should be a fun one. Second ranked opponent to be welcomed onto Schellenberger Field this season. It was Roanoke a couple of weeks ago in a game that Lynchburg really hung in from start to finish. Ended up dropping it by a mark of 10 to 7. The offense really didn't come together uh, through the second half. A lot of turnover issues plagued the Hornets down the back stretch, but Patricia Rogers, an impressive 19 save game. She will certainly be tested again today by one of the best teams, and I stress teams very largely for Washington Lee. Take a look at some of the stats coming into this afternoon. See that 15.7 goal per game mark. Now, the team lead in points is 54 for Hannah Bishop, a reigning first team all ODAC caliber player. But you will not find on the offensive side necessarily one or two ladies on this Washington Lee roster ranking in the top three, the top five of any one category. It is certainly death by a thousand paper cuts, if you will. It's a Washington Lee team that runs deep. How about 11 ODAC Player of the Week honorees this season from eight different players? We won't forget about the defense either. The reigning defensive player of the year in the conference in Eugenie Rovegno. She is fantastic, anchoring a deep squad on that end as well. And Caroline Kranick, well on her way to winning this year's unofficial Goalie of the Year award. Probably going to get that first team nod, but we've got a fantastic goalie battle for you down below. Again, Lynchburg's own Patricia Rogers. Welcome back into the lineup. Over the last several weeks, she's been fantastic. Sports the highest save percentage in the ODAC. Opening draw will be controlled by the Hornets. It's an area they've had a little bit of trouble uncharacteristically in the past couple of games. So a great sign to start this one out from Bruce Reed's squad. Now you got to try to avoid the turnover. Hornets will be unable to do so. And that first offensive possession never materializes into anything. Lynchburg wearing the new white jerseys they debuted earlier this week against Ferrum. So 1-0 mark in those uniforms. Certainly try to make that 2-0 here today. Right now, it's Jenny Taylor working it around as Washington Lee starts to set up this first offensive possession. They'll do so. A screen. It's not going to be used. First shot's going to go off wide. I believe that was from Walker McKnight. That's one of those... Washington Lee athletes with a player of the week honoree already on the season. But we'll get take two here for Washington Lee. A little bit of space. Looks like Rogers tracked that one, and she does. Lynchburg allows two shots, one on goal, but will get out of possession number one unscathed. Try to set up its first offensive possession. Going to be a battle for this ground ball. Going to be scooped up once again by Washington and Lee. Lynchburg unable to clear. As Caroline Wise... Clearing for the Generals. 12-time defending ODAC champs. How about that pickoff from Patricia Rogers? Mention how good she is. It's not just at what's directly in front of her. She does a fantastic job of keeping track of the ball at all times, wherever it is on the field. It's really hard to catch her off guard. That's why she's saving more than half the shot she faces, and it will be the Hornets that strike first. Speaking of heating up, that is Jordan Nilsson, the grad student that has been on a burner lately. Take a look at it again. That's another assist from Lynchburg's second leading scorer in Ala Daniel, and Jordan Nilsson finishes it off to give Lynchburg the first lead of the afternoon. Alla Daniels, 11th assist on the season. I believe that is goal number nine on the year for Jordan Nilsson. Excuse me, goal number eight. But she has multi-goal games in each 
of her last two appearances. What a way to start this one out for the Hornets where they will return back to the draw circle, try to make it 2-0 at midfield. Tori King flips it up against Washington and Lee's Cat Caples. Want to wish a special happy birthday there to King. Going to get an infraction here before Lynchburg sets this possession into motion. They are going to retain the ball. And it'll start out with King working backwards to Bornholt. A fantastic sophomore campaign. Picking up where her now assistant coach and Micah Slakem left off a season ago. First team all ODAC honoree was Slakem. It's going to be another turnover here for the Hornets that were able to capitalize on a fast break opportunity. But outside of that, turnovers have been an issue so far. Going to try to impede the Generals from clearing here. Cannot do so. Washington League very good at all the little things, as you may expect. Lynchburg tried some pressure against Ferrum earlier in the week, showing a little bit of it here early today. See how much that continues. Might only take a couple of burns from the Generals to ixnay that one. It's gonna, ball's gonna go down on the ground there. Lynchburg just about came up with a turnover of its own, but denied. Ground ball scooped up by Taylor. It's now Ali Schwab, two-time All-ODAC first team honoree, and this possession is gonna draw another whistle. Believe it's gonna be a free position. Gonna be taken by Hannah Bishop. Big offensive piece, as mentioned in the pregame, Hannah Bishop, 45 goals this season. Going to try for 46, not going to get it. Patricia Rogers, once again, stopping everything in her path so far today. Looking a lot like that performance we saw against Roanoke just a few weeks ago. Schberger across midfield to Seville, now clears to Steinau. They will set up. I believe this is just the second true offensive possession. Maybe the first time operating out of the half court, if you will. Whistles will blow. Ball will pause in the stick pocket, rather, of Peyton Seville. About dead center from the goal, guarded by Caroline Cranick. Play comes in from the Lynchburg sideline. Steinau with it now, working around the semicircle. Right to left, fakes. Going to be pushed out. Good defense there from Taylor. Might have been a little too aggressive there. A little warning from the officials. Here's King. She will be met far away from the goal. Reactive defense early on in the man-to-man -man here from Washington and Lee. Lynchburg's going to have to keep its composure operating here out of their offensive sets. Daniel working to her left. Passes off. Might have been looking for assist number two. Cut off to Seville. Turns out of it. Bouncing shot. Bounces a little too high. Ground ball battle scooped up nearly by Seville following her own shot. Possession is awarded to the Generals. Believe they would have come up with it anyway. Allie Doyle beating out Seville. Gave a good effort, just couldn't quite get there in time. So here goes the Generals to work again. Second highest ranked team in the country. Lynchburg's only other experience against ranked teams this season coming against the Aforementioned Roanoke Maroons, ranked 17th at the time. That's a team that this Washington and Lee group defeated 17-7 earlier this year. Part of what's been another impressive, perfect conference slate. Trying to make it another one here, and they will get their first goal of the afternoon from Shannon Timoney, the junior out of Mendham, New Jersey. Puts the Generals on the board and has the equalizer here. Nine minutes to go in the first quarter. 
Trisha Rogers holding up there for a bit. But eventually, something had to give. And the important thing coming away from that on the Lynchburg side is understanding this is a team that can score goals. And it's not going to be just one person. It could be anybody on any given afternoon. You can't get too dejected. You got to make sure, whether that be Rogers or the Lynchburg defense as a whole, keep their wits about them, keep their composure, just like we mentioned on the offensive side earlier. Back to the draw. It's going to be the first control for the Generals. It will be the goal scorer, Timoni. Mentioned that Lynchburg, not a ton of experience with ranked opponents so far this season. The opposite could not be more true for the Generals. Seven ranked games under their belt. They sport a 6-1 and one record in such games. One loss coming against York. It was ranked 10th at the time. Not only that, averaging nearly a five-goal margin in those games. Going to get a whistle here on this possession. Ball's going to stay with Washington and Lee. It's Timoney with it right now, and she is going to get the free position opportunity here. Timoney steps up. Looks like that will be ruled a goal. Be excited to watch this one again, but assuming it stands, which it looks like it will, that's goal number two for Timoney. Look at her break out of the free position stance. Put it right between the legs of Patricia Rogers. See Rogers just hold that stance. Oh, what happened? Where did that ball go? Bounces up and in. Two quick scores from Shannon Timoney. First lead of the afternoon for Washington and Lee and two quick ones. Then about 40 seconds. Generals putting a dent. And overtaking the Hornets early lead. Got a different Hornet in the draw circle now. It's going to be Neely Morris, but it won't change the result from the last time. Draw is going to be controlled again by Washington and Lee. Third straight offensive possession for the Generals. Hesitate to use the term danger zone. It's really early in this game, but just want to be cognizant if you're Lynchburg. This feels like possession you really, really want to stop. Lynchburg collapsing there on Walker McKnight. Good offensive piece for this Washington and Lee team. It's Claire Horner with it now. Coming around from behind the goal. Picked up nicely there from Bornhold. Looked for a moment as though Thompson may come around unchecked. Have a good look at the goal. Credit to the sophomore stepping up. That shot will go wide to Generals. The nearest to it. Timoney, who's had the hot stick early on. Continues this offensive possession as Washington and Lee works it around. Not much sense of urgency. 25 seconds on the shot clock. Doherty's the defender spinning out of the defense there was Hannah Bishop. Shot goes wide again, and with 12 seconds on the shot clock, Washington Lee going to have to work with some urgency now. Daniel the defender there. Pass is going to go up high, calls turnover. Not sure who it's going to be credited to. Bornholt and Wheel are both in the area, but that's a massive stop for this Lynchburg defense. For Washington Lee offense, that was really starting to heat up. That pass went into the center of the field to Ali Schwab, arguably the best offensive piece on a loaded Washington and Lee team. She really had nowhere to go with it once she got it. Caught the ball up high and chopping it out of her stick or a pair of those Hornet defenders. Sets up another offensive set. Steinau works to Dumas. Dumas. Had to take an early exit from that Ferrum game. A pair of cards maybe got a little rattled there. That pass goes a little haywire to the outside. Creating some space for herself, or at least attempting to do so there. Neely Morris. 
Another fantastic freshman for this Lynchburg team that just found its second goal. Take a look at it again. Another assist to Daniel. And just as we were talking about, O'Neely Morris cashes in on this one. Lynchburg knots up the Generals at two apiece. Hanging right around in the early going of this one. Very nice job from Lynchburg so far utilizing the cuts, getting people in position in the center of the field. They've been very active offensively. Obviously created some issues for the Generals defensively as well as we saw in that very last possession. And it's a Washington Lee team that's going to be active all game long, no matter what the score may be at any given point. Just observing them in pregame warm-ups today. It's a team with a lot of energy, a lot of confidence, and why shouldn't they? This is one of the best women's lacrosse teams and programs in the country. Coming off its third Elite Eight appearance in program history last season. Interesting to note as well, welcoming in a new head coach this year in Maddie Coleman. Nearly unblemished record in year number one as she has continued to protect that nearly 100-game win streak within the conference. Meredith Bornholt getting her stick in the way there. Ground ball battled for, awarded over to Lynchburg. Back-to-back -back stops for the Hornets. Can they make it two goals in a row? Seville catches that pass. Lynchburg may have a slight advantage here. Seville pulls up. Here we go. Another offensive set for Lynchburg. Steinau to Seville. We'll set things up. Against Ferrum, three Hornets finished with a hat trick. That included an outstanding four goal performance from Tory King, a career high. Daniel going to take a shot of her own. Saved very nicely there by Kranick. Good ball placement from the senior Daniel. Just better reaction from Kranick in goal. We're probably going to see quite a few nice little saves throughout this afternoon's matchup. Second game of a doubleheader on Schellenberger Field. It was Lynchburg men's lacrosse team taking down Virginia Wesleyan riding the ship, getting back in the win column. Lynchburg's women's team now trying to do the same with what would be a historic victory. Spinning out of some trouble there, went Capels. Now here's Schwab trying to knife her way through the Lynchburg defense. A little frustration from her as the whistle came down. I think nice consolation here. It's going to earn her the free possession. And once again, Rogers will be tested in goal from roughly the same spot. As Timoney cashed in on her second goal of the game. Nice little bounce shot. This time, Washington Lee will set up quality opportunity. They're going to get it and score on it. Looks like number 19, that'd be Jenny Lacevich. No, it'll actually be Hannah Bishop getting in the scoring column there. Pardon me, that last mistake. Bishop, the leading scorer for this Washington and Lee squad. Gets goal number 46 on the year. Brings her point total to 55. One of two players in this matchup that are north of 50 points on the year. The other, of course, Lynchburg, Sydney Dumas. Doing so in her freshman campaign. It's been a great one. Eight hat tricks on the season for Dumas. It's going to be another draw controlled here by the Generals. Capel's with it right now. Lynchburg definitely continuing to show some of that pressure. Trying to make things difficult for Washington and Lee on the clear, but hasn't necessarily paid off just yet.
Last goal scorer with it right now, Bishop. Surveys the scene, passes out along the goal line is Thompson. She flips off to Schwab. Nothing doing for her. Bornholt working, excuse me, Wheeler working left to right, just tracking her behind the goal. Lynchburg sticking to man at the moment. Little edge there for Bishop. Her shot goes wide, and this time it's Lynchburg that will collect the ball. And facing a slight 3-2 deficit, look to even that score back up. 240 to go in this highly competitive first quarter. First quarters have been kind to Lynchburg on the year. Dumas taking a little contact there from Bishop. It looks like high screen. Jostled the ball from her stick. Scoops it up. Runs back behind midfield. Let's try this again. High double team there for Dumas. Battle for the ground ball. Looked like scooped up by Washington Lee, but officials say awarded back to Lynchburg. Getting some pressure from the Generals as well. Darty's able to clear for Lynchburg. Washington Lee backing off a little bit there after drawing a couple of whistles, it looked like. Lynchburg setting up its offensive set pretty quickly here. Usually like to pass the ball around the world a little bit. Didn't quite have the luxury there due to times. Got that set going. Under 40 seconds on the shot clock, but it's going to be another Lynchburg turnover. Right again, Washington and Lee crossing midfield. It's Timoney, leading scorer among both teams so far. Timoney may have momentarily thought about coast to coast, thinks better, passes out. And with a full shot clock, just a slight disparity between shot and game clock, about 15 seconds. Washington and Lee looking to take its largest advantage of the game so far. If they're able to cash in. Had a good look at it there until that hole is plugged by Seville. Going to draw another whistle. Looks like another free position. If memory is correct. This will be number three so far. Rushing up to the goal. That one looked pretty easy, and making it look as such was Jenny Lasevich. Tried to give her a goal a moment ago. It was actually her teammate Bishop, but this time out of the free position, Lasevich gets in close, puts that one right over the head of Rodgers. Washington and Lee will capture that fourth goal of this first quarter. In 57 seconds, Lynchburg certainly has time to set things up, but Flip side of that, so does Washington and Lee. See who wants to earn it here at the draw. It's Morris still in the circle. Daniel and Seville out wide for Lynchburg. Timoney out there paired up with Daniel as well for Washington and Lee. Balls up, Daniel, first to it, scoops it up and easily clears this time. That's a sigh of relief for Lynchburg. Daniel pretty good at taking care of the ball. Good pass there to Morris. She looked, find some space there. Her second goal of the game is what she was looking for. Doesn't have it. Back to Daniel with 38. Steinau off a laser of a pass there from Seville. She backs out, got cut off. Now Steinau working the other direction, continues to run into defenders with 21. Going to get a push there, it looks like, from Washington and Lee. Steinau can take a moment to collect herself with 15 seconds and a little bit of space to work. Most she's seen this possession. It's been brutal. Passes out to Daniel. Thought about a shot instead. Whistle's going to come down. It's going to be free position number one for Lynchburg. This is a big one. 12 seconds. Daniel with the ball. Daniel lines it up. Bounce shot off the top corner post. Just misplaced that one a little bit. Like the idea there from Daniel. 
He's already got two assists on the day. But it will be Washington and Lee that escapes quarter number one with a 4-2 advantage. Highly competitive first 15 minutes. Hope for more of the same in quarter number two. Want to have some outdoor adventures while getting a degree at the same time? At the University of Lindsford, we have an on-campus zip line room. Plus, we offer adventure trips that cost less than a cup of coffee. And did I mention our beautiful scenery? We're a university for students looking for something more than just books. Welcome to your new adventure experience. This is the dough. It's wicked cute. It's always so pretty. Every great college has a great city. For Lynchburg, we are near urban areas with lots of restaurants, shopping, and events. Plus, we are one of the top schools in the area. Come see for yourself. Never quite know what you're going to get in Lynchburg, Virginia from a weather standpoint. Now, before you worry about checking your TV, you know, maybe is that static? What is that? Nope, it's just rain piling up on the push-out windows here inside our press box. We have had the rain off and on all throughout the day. Right now, cross your fingers, got some dry skies. See a couple members of the Lynchburg men's lacrosse team out there taking in the women's game. Fist pumps there from Will Scheimer and Tyler Hadley. Got a pair of great goalies in this game. Hadley on the men's side, another one of those. Got to be liking what he's seeing so far. But isn't it funny that even rain or shine seems like always picturesque skies behind Schellenberger Field and the new Westover dorms. Today they got a lot of clouds in them, but... Having a lot of fun with this game so far that ends the first quarter with a 4-2 Washington and Lee advantage. It will be Tori King, the birthday girl, back in the draw circle for Lynchburg. Neely Morris took over those duties for a bit. See a lot of the crowd due to the rain moving up there behind the cover of those new Westover dorms I just mentioned. A lot of EC Glass students taking in today's game. Got to imagine they've been pleased so far with the effort they've gotten from their hometown Lynchburg Hornets. Coach Bruce Reed and the team themselves may be a little happier if they had an advantage. It'll be Washington and Lee that'll look to extend that mark here with possession number one. McKnight gets past Satterfield. Thought she might have been able to set something up. Passes out instead. Washington and Lee, 8-0 this year away from home. That includes four of those ranked wins we discussed in the first half. So outside of that perfect streak against the ODAC, also seeking their second perfect road season in the last three years a win today would clinch that as it'll be two more at home to round out the year for the generals scooping shot there whistle came down before it shot was from bishop it's gonna earn another free position here for hannah bishop leading score for the general, struck once in the first half. Going to be denied by Rogers here, who comes out of the goal. Golden opportunity had she not been able to scoop it up. But we will never know as she did. Important to note, Meredith Bornholt checking in on the goal in Rogers' absence. Now it's Lynchburg maybe looking to work quickly. Seville out to Steinau. Another freshman on a Lynchburg team. And offense littered with them. It's been a fantastic first-year class for Bruce Reed's 
team. Got a lot to be excited for moving forward with that group. Coming there from behind with the slashing move there, forces the turnover. That was Jenny Lasevich. She's already gotten on the board with a goal, does it on the defensive in there too. Now she hits the turf, and it's going to be, it looks like, the third card in the last two games awarded to Sydney Dumas. Can't say she doesn't play with heart. But got to remember her team certainly needs her on the field as much as they can get. Take a look at it again there. You be the judge back at home. Mentioned early exit for Dumas after picking up two of those yellows last game out against Ferrum. Now, didn't play much of an effect in that game. Hornets winning 17-3 to for their sixth win of the season. That pass goes haywire for Washington Lee. A rare miscue battle for it. Empty net for Lynchburg. Rogers not afraid to move out of the goal here early in this one. Ball's going to stay with Washington and Lee. It'll be behind the goal. It'll be Jenny Taylor to cue this one in. McKnight operating on that near side once again. This time cut off by a Lynchburg double team. Finds Timoney in the center of the field. Momentarily her eyes wide with thoughts of a hat trick. She'll be denied. Now back to McKnight. Flag goes up in the air from the goal line. Official going to be another free position here for the Generals. Already cashed in a couple of times. Going to look to do so again. McKnight goes out wide. Shot going to be denied. Sound like Dr. Seuss there for a moment. Rhyme and repetition. And once again, possession continues for the Generals, scooping up the ground ball. Schwab from behind the goal. Now Satterfield battling for it, trying to scoop it up off the carpet. Here comes a couple more Hornets. Doherty hits the ground. Taylor trips over her, and all the effort and hustle will result in a Lynchburg possession. Down by two, but they've survived First couple of possessions and three minutes of this first, excuse me, second quarter without surrender, surrendering that fifth goal. Bornholt, the defender, will clear it for Lynchburg. She trades places with Steinau. Libby Kennedy back in there as well for Lynchburg. Again, a man down right now. Sydney Dumas. In the box, just eyeing that clock for when she can come back into this game. Lynchburg may be stalling until they're able to get her back. See the time be counted down there, and Dumas returns back to the action. 35 seconds on the shot clock. Here comes the Lynchburg offensive set. Daniel with it. She's dished out a pair of dimes in that first half. A couple of assists. Or the senior leader. Seville across the field to Kennedy. She's pushed out wide of the goal. Washington Lee doing a great job early on keeping Lynchburg out of the inside of the field unless they do something crafty with a play or whatnot to set something up in there. Kranick will be tested but makes the stop. Good job corralling that pass by Julia Thompson. That's a quality offensive possession from Lynchburg. You'd like to get more than one crack at it, but did put a quality shot on the goal. It didn't go too quickly. Used up a good bit of the shot clock. Smart to wait until Dumas could return to action. They will be denied again. One of the best to defend the posts in the conference. Tough pass there. Will connect with Bishop, guarded by Darty. Swing back to her inside. Cut the shot a little too high, but you couldn't draw it up. Much better than that if you are Washington and Lee. The cutter there was Sophie Edwards. 
She will now take free position opportunity instead. Those are starting to mount up for Washington Lee. She bobbles it though. Ground ball got away from Rogers. Scooped up Bornholt. Backs away from her challenger and Julia Thompson. And once again, Lynchburg defense standing tall, much like they did to kick off the first quarter. Now, where's the offense going to come from? Generals have done a good job of keeping Sidney Dumas out of this game as much as possible. I haven't called her name a ton. It's not to say she's the only offensive weapon Lynchburg has as King takes some contact there. Double team on her near side. and Looks like it's going to be a man up opportunity for the Hornets. It's going to be a trip to the box for Caroline Wise, senior defender out of Charlotte, North Carolina, is going to take a seat. Tory King is going to cue it up for Lynchburg on the near side. Good opportunity for the Hornets. Try and draw back within one. It's like Mia Sullivan checking into the game now. Reagan Bednar as well. Pair of seniors for Lynchburg coming in in relief here. Seville pass a little too high for Sullivan. She would have been set up in a pretty good spot. But instead, running that one down is Cranick. Washington and Lee will not be hurt by the man down opportunity. For Washington and Lee averaging 20 goals a game in ODAC matchups so far this season. Got to credit the Lynchburg defense in the early going. A lot of game to be played. Still eight minutes in the first half. Holding the Generals to four so far. Defense has really been heating up this month for Lynchburg. Averaging north of 18 ground balls. Right about nine cause turnovers a game. And in goal... Patricia Rogers has been on fire, nine and a double zero goal against average, 50% save percentage. They've come to play again here today. It's Edwards with it at that last shot go a little high. Beautiful cut on the last possession for Washington and Lee. Tough pass, gonna connect with Edwards. Her shot goes wide. So last time high, this time wide. Ground ball scooped up by Lynchburg. Boy, he may be staying on this side of the field. Ball will still belong to the Hornets. Man up opportunity about to end for Lynchburg. Caroline Wise back on her feet. But they're gonna turn right back into another man up opportunity as Taking Wise's seat will be Lasevich. Lasevich a goal already today. Cause turnover. A little over aggressive on that last play though. It's going to earn her second card against the Generals today. Three overall in this first half. Seems to be a theme in many of Lynchburg's games this season, particularly at home, but a few abroad as well. Have to wonder if maybe that's style of play as Hornets will turn it over here. Another man up opportunity expires. Should say wasted rather. Slasevic is still taking a seat. Hornet pressure is backed off a tad. Trying to break that one up was Dumas. Didn't get there in time. Washington and Lear, excuse me, Washington and Lee will clear to Timoney. Pair of goals and a scoreless second quarter so far. Both of hers obviously coming in the first. Twenty seven guarding twenty seven out wide there. It's Claire Horner. For the Generals working against 
Lynchburg's Kalen Satterfield. Horner finds some space, but has to work all the way back around the field. Now with an edge on the goal line coming around, Doherty. Good job marking that defender. Double team out wide from Lynchburg. Guarding Julia Thompson, force her out wide. 25 seconds on the shot clock. It's been a good defensive possession so far for Lynchburg. Thompson surveys, doesn't really have anybody to pass it to. Starts to take it herself, dishes off to Bishop. She'll spin out. That pass goes too high, and with just 10 seconds, ball will be scooped up by Horner. She loses control of it, and with four seconds left on the shot clock, she elects to just let that possession expire. Great work from the Lynchburg defensive unit, cutting off the generals at every angle. They've done it in a variety of ways. And although the free position has been much of the detriment for Lynchburg early on, there's not a whole lot you can do about that once it gets set up. It turns into a mainly one-on-one -on -one battle between the offensive player and the goalie. Pretty 50-50 shot there. Washington Lee and Timoney, who's been active so far, thinking... Might have gotten the break on that one, but Lynchburg will retain 440. And again, still have not seen a goal in this second quarter. We're going to get a timeout down on the field. We'll take a quick break before we return here on LHSN. Final five minutes of what's been a fantastic first half. We return to a soggy Schellenberger field. First time out of the afternoon. A game that Washington and Lee fell down one nothing early on. Pair of Shannon Timoney goals and a lot of free position opportunities have aided in the Generals taking this two goal advantage. But a lot of credits also got to be dished out to the Lynchburg defense has not allowed a goal so far in this second quarter. Just speaking at the break, you wonder if a lot of this defensive improvement for the Hornets may be a byproduct of new graduate assistant Micah Slakem, first team all ODAC honoree on the defensive side a season ago, just getting more comfortable in her new coaching role and starting to really pass on a lot of her wisdom to this Lynchburg team. Nevertheless, it's the Lynchburg offense on the field right now. Mentioned Washington Lee with a goose egg in the scoring column in quarter number two, but same can be said for Lynchburg. We are stuck on the same score we ended the first quarter with. See if Lynchburg can put a dent in it here. Spill loses control of that one and converging on the ball like a pack of great white sharks came Washington and Lee defenders, three of them. Converging down on that area, forcing the turnover. Very opportunistic defense. Say the same about their offense. Anytime that ball gets put on the turf, somebody's going to be there, and more than likely it's going to be more than one somebody. Center of the field now working to her left over to that wing. Passing off, it goes to Schwab. Guarded by Wheeler. Now the ball's on the ground from Washington and Lee. Battle between Bornholt and a pair of general offensive players coming out of the fray. It will be scooped up by Caples. Possession continues. Bornholt wanted to put a stop to it there. Just too many generals in the area. Making a break on the goal. That shot going to be hard to stop from one of the best to do it in the Odak Alley, Schwab. 
senior out of Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. Mention back-to-back -back first team all ODAC honorees here calming her nerves there, talking to her teammates. Mention the confidence and the energy emanating from this Washington and Lee team in the pregame. You got to wonder, though, facing a lot of resistance on the defensive end through the better part of this first half. Could just be a little reminder there from Schwab and company. Just reminding, especially the younger players, don't worry. Had a three-goal lead. We are in control of this game. In the draw circle, it's Morris again for Lynchburg. She continues to battle against Capel's. Been relatively even, but it does seem like Generals have gotten the best of Lynchburg more often than not since we turned over after roughly the first five or so minutes of that first quarter. Team in blue finally ending the scoring drought on both sides in this second quarter. Right around three minutes to play. They're going to try to make it back to back. That'd be a big blow. It's Lynchburg's hopes of an upset. They can go into the break with a four goal lead. Jade Mayer into the game for Lynchburg and into it for Washington Lee is Emma Marsh. Ball's been put on the turf a couple of times already on this possession for the Generals. They've been able to track it down and collect it every time. Low shot this time, stopped. Saved by Rogers. First team all Lodak honoree a season ago. I believe that is her fifth save against five goals allowed. So sitting right at that 50% save percentage mark she came into today with. Kranich has not been tested quite as much, but 50% herself at Two goals allowed, two saves. Here's Daniel trying to respond for Lynchburg. Once again, goes to the bounce shot this time. Rather, I should say, yet again, does not come up positive. Generals trying to get away from the Lynchburg pressure, trying to do so by moving quickly. Certainly want to set up one more quality offensive possession. And clearing it across to Capels. They're going to do so. 114 to play in this first half. Kranich coming up and making her third save of the game. On that last play. Capels well defended in close. Mayer. On the help, that's Bornholt protecting far goal line against Horner. Back up top to McKnight. She'll be get a little push there from Morris. Looks like that may have drawn a whistle. Frustration on the Lynchburg sideline from that. We are going to have another free position. Been a little bit since we've seen one, but this time it'll be Walker McKnight lining one up against Patricia Rogers. Backs out, gives to Horner. Washington Lee wants to use a little more time. A lot of open space there on the near side for Marsh. Doesn't take advantage of it. Get another whistle. Looks like another free position lining up, too, on this possession now. This time it'll be Jenny Taylor. Again, Washington Lee looking for a big goal. 30 seconds remain in the sec first half. Shot will go wide. Looks like left. Scooped up immediately by Washington and Lee. A little bit of urgency now with only seven on the shot clock. Now five. McKnight looking for something cut off by a pair of Lynchburg defenders, and they are going to earn their second shot clock violation of this first half, more specifically the second quarter. Don't think they're going to have time to do anything with it. But that was a big stop from the Lynchburg defense. Offense is unable to capitalize in quarter number two, but they only allow one Washington and Lee goal. We've hit the half in the Hill City. Lynchburg not going away, Washington and Lee.
with the three goal lead. Lynchburg is all about you, your ideas, and your goals. We've got one professor for every 10 students, so you can get all the support you need. In the classroom, in the lab, or in nature. You'll learn by putting yourself out there, and we're right there with you. a physical therapist probably starting about halfway through college. I love the concept that exercise is medicine. You know, we're starting to discover that exercise really can remedy many of the things that we thought that only surgery or only drugs could remedy in the past. When the student comes here, it's because we believe in them, it's because we want them here, um, it's because we believe they'll be successful. The faculty here are, are devoted to their development, not only academically, but also professionally. We're not so inundated with things that we don't have time to make students one of our highest priorities. We have your back. We're going we're gonna to help you through that. If you're willing to work, then we're willing to put the work into it and the effort to, to help you succeed. Well, mentioned earlier today that Lynchburg men's lacrosse team currently ranked 12th in the country by USILA. Got back in the win column. Another ODAC victory moves them to 10-5 and five overall on the year as they took down Virginia Wesleyan 24-2. Right here on Schellenberger Field, a rare lacrosse doubleheader with the women today following up the men. Take a look at a couple of highlights from that game earlier today. It's a little bit of a soggy one there as well. Check out a goal from Aiden Olmstead right there. How about the celebration as well? Karate Kid in the house. Lynchburg obviously there's 24 goals. It's going very well. Included a very special first goal right out of the faceoff. You can officially call him, well, I guess a Fogo, but we'll substitute the get off for goal here in this case as Riley Frankel there number 19 comes right out of the faceoff victory and adds again that first career goal he's having a heck of a year whenever he comes in in relief of Michael Kraus in the faceoff circle but as for the women's game we have on hand again at five to two advantage for Washington and Lee after the first 30 minutes I mentioned this is a Washington Lee team averaging 20 goals per game in their ODAC contest Lynchburg holding them to just five in that first half. You can't ask for a whole lot more defensively other than obviously you want to limit some of the free position opportunities. Generals have racked up quite a few of those in the first half. Now offensively, see there a little bit to be desired, just two goals so far. Ala Daniel 
and the Hornets kicking those off very early in that first quarter. Daniel assisting on each, but since then, prolonged dry spell for the Hornet offense. That will certainly be a point of emphasis in that huddle. We got about four minutes and change until we get the second half underway. Number two, Washington and Lee and Lynchburg trying to pull off the upset in its home regular season finale. I was really attracted to Lynchburg primarily because my dad went here. Um, he is an alum, so I kind of had that close tie of being interested in this school. And the school had what I wanted to study. I knew I wanted to help people in the area of health and wellness. So the health promotion program was definitely a program that drew me in. And from day one, I've been in love with it, and I wouldn't have chosen it different. I have never had um, better professors or teachers in my life. And I think here at the University of Lynchburg, the professors definitely care about their students, especially in the health promotion department. These professors want you to be educated, want you to have the experience, and just want you to feel confident going into your career path following your collegiate education. You just feel like you're cared for here and that you matter, and that no matter what, at the end of the day, you're gonna be successful. And the people here really want to be here, and everyone has a purpose, and it's just a great environment to be in. Be ready for anything, okay? Come on, let's go together! Together, let's go! Well, we showed you some of the men's highlights. We'll show you some of the women's highlights as well from that first half. Been a physical game, a lot of free position opportunities for the visitors. Three cards in that first half. Big goal there from Ali Schwab, the fifth and the only of the second quarter. But Lynchburg defense coming up with a lot of stops, whether that be in the form of a Patricia Rogers save. She's had four of those so far. Also, two shot clock violations forced by that Lynchburg defense that we mentioned really been heating up in the last month or so. They're going to need to certainly keep that going throughout the second half. And we will see what Washington and Lee comes out with, what kind of energy they enter this second half with. I suspect it'll be pretty, pretty high. It's not a team that's going to be easily discouraged. That's not how you build up a 98-game conference winning streak and again not necessarily rattled going on the road either we mentioned that 8-0 mark away from home this season looking to make that a perfect 9-0 if they can pick up a win here today Lynchburg again trying to buck a trend a bit in this one it's been two wins two losses two wins two losses 
over their past eight contests. Currently on a two-game win streak, a road victory against Randolph Macon. Hard-fought road victory, I should include. And then that home game earlier this week, a 17-3 win over Farum that we've discussed a little bit already in this game. They're able to pick up the upset today. It would be the first time this year that Lynchburg has won three straight, but I think the narrative may be a lot bigger than that as this is a Washington lead team that has won each of the past 12 ODAC championships. It's not lost a conference game since April of 2013. That was against Guilford. Just about 10 years ago to the day, April 20th. Quakers getting the best of Washington and Lee for the last time in recent memory. We got a full 30 minutes to go in this one. Should be a great finale. Opening draw is going to be controlled by the visitors. Eugenie Ravigno, we have not called the name of much today. She's been active. Again, reigning ODAC Defensive Player of the Year. Part of a group effort that has held Lynchburg to just two goals so far. I mentioned WNL averaging north of 20 goals per game in conference matchups, which, by the way, is absolutely ridiculous video game type numbers. But Lynchburg on the other side, a healthy 13 and change in such games as well. Here's Schwab. She got on the board late in that first half, was looking for another one there, won't get it. Washington and Lee continues its opening possession of the second half. And the goal is McKnight. She passes off. Not really anywhere to go with it. There is Edwards. She's had a couple of looks at the goal today. Hadn't cashed in with Pater yet. That shot bounces off and over the goal. Had a couple of players collide. Looks like it will be Jenny Taylor and Taylor Doherty. Now Schwab lines up another one. This time she cashes in. And the Washington and Lee lead is its largest of the game at four goals. We have our second multi-goal scorer of the day in Schwab. The more she shoots, the more she will score. Repetition will certainly pay off for anyone as talented as the senior attacker out of Pennsylvania. Mentioned Pennsylvania there. Not a whole lot of in-state talent on this loaded Washington and Lee team. It's a roster scattered with Tennessee, New York, New Jersey, a couple of Denver, Colorados. Not necessarily most proximal to Lexington, Virginia, but a lot of those places are what you could say lacrosse hotbeds, especially from a youth perspective. So shout out to the state of Virginia. Take this Washington and Lee team, University of Virginia men's and women's teams. We'll throw in the Lynchburg and Washington and Lee men's squads into that conversation as well. A pair of nationally ranked teams. Washington and Lee controls each of the first two draws of this second half. Got a lot of the momentum right now. Here's McKnight looking for another one. Trick shot there will not pay off. Scooped up and saved by Rogers, who is never rattled. Neither is this defense, but got to figure they're just waiting on that offense to kick in. A couple of times this year where the defense has come up big against very solid opponents here on the home turf. Mentioned Roanoke, but that Meredith game comes to mind as well. Lynchburg having trouble getting over the 10 goal mark in each of those examples. Lost the Meredith contest 9 to 8. Despite valiant effort in the second half, fourth quarter, to try and pull off the comeback, came up just short. Here's 
Here's Tori King up high. Pass. A little bit tricky to Dumas. She collects it, though. Lucky that nobody was right up on her. Dumas, defenders all over. Her shot will bounce up and over the goal. Believe that is the first shot of the game from Lynchburg's leading scorer, who is currently guarded by Timoney. But it will be Steinau scoring for the first time since about midway through the first quarter. Lynchburg back on the board responds to the opening goal from the Generals. And the deficit retreats back to just three. Steinau working left to right. Another one of those fantastic first year players for Bruce Reed's team. Steinau. That is her 20th goal of the year and 25th point. Lynchburg offense will certainly be a force to be reckoned with next year, as will the defense. Down the roster, Kalen Satterfield will be back. Patricia Rogers will be back. Meredith Bornholt, the same. In the draw, Tori King, who's out there right now, just a junior as well. Go on all day. A lot of returning talent next year for Lynchburg. On the other side, Washington and Lee. Hear the phrase a lot. When you get as good as they are, it's not about rebuilding ever. It's just reloading. Mention all that talent from all across the country. That's a big factor. That's why year in and year out, for the better part of the last decade, generals have been the pinnacle. Doing so throughout multiple head coaches as well. It's just the first year, as we mentioned earlier, for Maddie Coleman. Comes to Lexington from Denison, where she was first an assistant, then a head coach. Member of a Big Red program that won seven NCAC conference titles in her nine seasons there. Compiled a 111 and 42 record over her tenure. And about 2018 IWLCA Assistant Coach of the Year honors as well. Well, in this game, she's got to be pleased. Overall, how this one's going. Another free position lining up there for the Generals. Won't take the shot. Swings over to Taylor. She was cut off. Good defense from the Hornets. Up top is Lasevich. Had to take a seat earlier in the game, but she's been active on both ends. On the near goal line is Schwab. Pair of goals for her. She'll pass out to Edwards. Can be cut off. Jostles the ball loose there is Bornholt. Bornholt continues to stay with Edwards. As Edwards passes back out. Schwab with it again, working one-on-one. -on -one. Gets the jump on Wheeler. Whistle will blow. Frustration from Meredith Bornholt. That is not who you want to see opposite of you if you're Patricia Rogers in goal. Allie Schwab, number three, going to be looking for goal number three on another Washington and Lee free position. Shot saved by Rogers. It's the second time she's done that today. Not easy to stop. Those free position opportunities, and certainly not, they come from talented players such as Ali Schwab. Rogers steps up and makes it happen on that one, her sixth save of the game. Sun starting to peek out from behind the new Westover dorms. This is a little bit of a unique start time. For the Lynchburg women's lacrosse program. Very often it's that sun that provides a little bit of trouble in the first half or the first quarter of games. Today it may become a factor in the better half of the second. Hornets looking to shake that off and draw two within two. Here with a little over nine minutes to go in the third. Twenty-eight seconds on the shot clock. Reminded of the thirty-second warning there by the sideline. Morris hasn't really had anywhere to go. That pass too high for its intended recipient, and Mia Sullivan 
Trying to catch it on the back end is not able to get it either. Clearing quickly, here comes Taylor and Washington and Lee trying to set something up, they will do so. And right back to that four goal advantage goes Washington and Lee, up now seven to three. Hannah Bishop gets on the board once again, rips that one in there. Fast break opportunity capitalized on by the Generals. And again, that one coming off of a Lynchburg turnover. It's Hornet turnovers. And free position goals have been feasted on like it's Thanksgiving by this Washington and Lee team. Go back to the draw circle as well, where Washington Lee has been very good as of late. Again, now supporting that 7-3 advantage. See if Neely Morris can award possession back over to her team. It will do so. It will be off an infraction, but it really doesn't matter how you get it. Lynchburg's hopefully going to be able to set up an offensive set. Now Daniel will kick it off. A little bit more urgency on this possession for Lynchburg. Often wait at least a good 20 to 25 seconds into the shot clock before they really start thinking about offense. Not the case here. Not that time is really an issue. Only midway through this third quarter. Here comes Dumas looking for her first goal. Going to be denied. Once again, going into the inside, Washington Lee's going to make you pay for it. Now a pair of generals giving chase to Dumas. Brief conversation between her and the goal line official there. Certainly got roughed up a bit on that possession. There's a reason why Lynchburg's not been able to get in the middle of this Washington and Lee defense too often today. It's physical in there. Once again, Lynchburg defense will be tested. Been active for a lot of this game. That would have been a great look at it from McKnight. But Lynchburg will scoop up the ground ball. It's Bornholt with it. Three Washington and Lee players work down on her, but she passes back out to her goalie. Now Wheeler looks to set things in motion for Lynchburg. Gets it up to Steinau, freshman to freshman. Steinau shaking off defenders. Now trying to not get herself worked into a corner. Dodges the official as well. Generals back off a bit. Lynchburg's going to get another offensive possession. They can remain within three. They're in relative striking distance. That four goal mark is a point of a little bit of worry. Especially a Lynchburg team that's had some struggle offensively so far today. The struggles will continue. Sullivan unable to corral that. And then a collision between Peyton Seville. And Shannon Timoney. That's going to be a card against Seville. Second one going against Lynchburg today. That is our fifth of the game overall. Excuse me, it'll, it's actually Dumas taking a seat. I believe that's Dumas's second. So a man-up opportunity for a Washington and Lee team that has extended this thing out to a four-goal lead and only one goal coming for Lynchburg outside of the first quarter. 
That pass is high. And the first one, too, it's going to be Bornhold. That's the case more often than not. She doesn't have anywhere to go with it right now. But that Lynchburg defense continues to come up with the necessary stops. Now under five and a half to go and still just seven goals on the board for the visitors. So this has been a profitable quarter for the visiting team. Three goals by three different goal scorers in our third set of 15. Lynchburg one on the board, looking to make it two here. Once again, Lynchburg facing a defense from Washington and Lee that's not afraid to defend far away from the goal. Lynchburg had some success getting some cutters into open space in the first quarter. We really haven't seen much of that since then. Stein out with it now. She'll take, looks like an elbow to the shoulder region from Sam Van Bell. That's going to be a card against Van Bell, so... Even numbers out there, each team with a player taking a seat. It's back to even numbers, certainly a help for Lynchburg looking for its fourth goal of the game. Bruce Reed calls in from the Lynchburg sideline. We are even for 20 seconds. Stein out with it right now. Lone goal score in the second half for Lynchburg, but it's going to be turned over back to Washington and Lee. Unforced error there by the Hornets. And Lynchburg's now the man up team. Of course, will not be Dumas jogging back on. It will be Chastity corner instead. Play stops again. That's going to be an unforced error on the other side. Don't see many of those, but can Lynchburg capitalize? That pass, little risky. Taylor Doherty may have never even seen the defender in Julia Thompson, and that possession never materializes for Lynchburg. She was looking for Ala Daniel. Breaking on that ball very nicely came Thompson. Junior out of New York awarding possession right back over to the second ranked team in the nation. One on one opportunity there. It's looked like Corner got the best of her defender. Horner, excuse me. Lynchburg gets out of that again. Another great opportunity for Washington and Lee. Yet again, Lynchburg gets out of it unscathed. Defense has done what it's needed to do for the most part. Doherty will clear it. A little bit of drama on her way there. Works off to Tory King. A little bit of a break from the sun now. Cloud coverage. That ball, again, it's going to be another turnover. Just a little bit of a lazy pass there from Lynchburg. It's McKnight. Looks like scooped that one up. And now back on for Washington and Lee comes Van Bell. So back to even numbers of full count on both sides with a little over two minutes to go in the third. And Washington and Lee with the ball. Can Lynchburg come up with one more stop here in this third quarter? It's McKnight with it there. Had a step on Morris. Passed out instead to Schwab. Now that shot looks like scored from Taylor. Rodgers came out of the goal, a couple of steps, and that one bounced around, but going to be credited as a goal to number seven, 
for Washington and Lee. Jenny Taylor bouncing right there on the goal line. Game of inches here on Schellenberger Field. Washington and Lee lead grows to a game high five. Just under two minutes to go in the third. Now you start to wonder what kind of fight is still left in this Lynchburg team that had itself firmly in the game through the first and second quarters. It's been all generals for the most part here in the third. Mentioned the Meredith comeback effort earlier this season. It's a team in Lynchburg that can fight. Winning the draw here helps that out a lot. Alec Daniel with it, whose name we haven't called much since those early assists in the first quarter. Ball again goes down on the ground, quickly breaking on it came Washington and Lee. It was Ravigno. And it's going to be a turnover. Lynchburg not going to get a shot off on that possession. Washington and Lee wants to get one off on the other side. A little over a minute to go. Here comes Timoney looking for the hat trick. And she will get it. Back-to-back -back goals for Washington and Lee. And the Generals are cooking. The road team, a six-goal advantage with 102 to play in the third. Third goal of the game from Timoney. Had the second leading goal scorer for this Washington and Lee team coming into today, 26 on the year. That number is approaching 30, much quicker than Lynchburg would like. It is going to be a Lynchburg timeout here again. 102 to go in the third. We will take it with them and see what kind of response we get coming out of this one from Lynchburg. You're watching LHSN. Get your career in the game by enrolling in the University of Lynchburg MBA program with an emphasis in sport management. This program opens the doors to new possibilities for a variety of careers. From being an athletic director or working in athletic administration to working for professional organizations, your favorite team to running a local parks and rec department. And employers are increasingly requesting and preferring individuals who have postgraduate education specifically looking for an MBA. And so the University of Lynchburg Sport Management concentration in the MBA program sets you up for success and it sets you apart from the many other people looking for jobs in the industry. Learn from winners. Here you will learn from professors and mentors who have spent their careers doing exactly what you want. We got about a minute to go in this third quarter where Washington and Lee has opened things up. Wide here in this third period. We hit the half, a 4-2 mark. Generals own this quarter by a score of 5-1 and have gotten the best of Patricia Rogers and the Lynchburg defense more often than not. On the offensive side, where more of Lynchburg's troubles have lied today, they're going to have to go the rest of the way without their leading scorer, second game in a row. Sidney Dumas has been knocked out of early. Second goal in a row. She is also held scoreless. No points. It'll certainly be a tough task if there will be any comeback effort here from Lynchburg. Do win the draw here. Less than a minute to go. Washington Lee making things difficult. As they try to even cross midfield. Bornholt will do so. Gets that pass over the head of Timoney. Setting up offensively is Steinau with 35 seconds to go. Lynchburg does not have the luxury of wasting much time. Sullivan to Daniel. Daniel to Morris. 20 seconds on the game clock. Shot clock is off. 
Morris, nowhere to go there. Tries to go inside. Ball and swung in there much. Stein now looking for a second of the quarter. Denied by Kranick. Second attempt goes behind the goal. Washington and Lee closest to it. And they can wind down the clock. Final seconds ticking off. That was the best opportunity Lynchburg has seen since Steinau's earlier goal. But Kranick and the Washington and Lee defense come out of it, still holding that six-goal lead and all the momentum as we turn the page to the fourth quarter right here on LHSN. My name is Alexis Fabula. I major in criminology and I double minor in psychology and criminal forensics. My favorite part about Lynchburg is the friends that I've um, come to have. It's helped me come out of my shell more and it's helped me become the person I am and the student I am. I really enjoyed how small the campus was and I also really enjoy um, how small the class sizes are. It made me feel like I was going to be more engaged than I would at a bigger campus. If someone was on the fence of coming to the University of Lynchburg, I would definitely love to sit down and have a conversation with them because I'm forever grateful that I made this choice. Um, it's definitely something that a student wouldn't regret. I, out of my four years here, I've not had one bad experience. I've had a great four years and I'm gonna be very sad to go. This is the doll. It's wicked cute. It's always so pretty. University of Lynchburg, we've lowered our tuition so you get a better value for a great education. Come see our campus for yourself. We return to Schellenberger Field with the final 15 minutes on tap between the Hornets and the Generals. It's been all of the latter. Throughout the third quarter, they open up a 9-3 advantage. Another balanced attack. Again, from a team with 11 ODAC Player of the Week nods this season. They're using everybody on the field so far, but it is Shannon Timoney leading the way for the visitors. She's got a hat trick. Hannah Bishop getting on the board several times. And Ali Schwab as well. This game is certainly not over. Lynchburg, a good start. Ala Daniel, back-to-back -back times, controlling a draw for Lynchburg. Looking for its second goal of the half. They got a great opportunity set up for McKenna Steinau right there at the end of that third quarter. She has scored the lone goal of the half. Libby Kennedy quickly gets things going in quarter number four. That is a tough shot. Outside. On the far side, catches, turns, shoots, and scores. Methodical offense there from Libby Kennedy and Lynchburg to get things going quickly. In this fourth quarter, stumbled there for a moment. Looks like she's okay. Big goal for Lynchburg. They're back within five. They've controlled. The last pair of draws, another one coming up here. King and Morris have alternated duties at midfield. And again, throughout the entire game, it has been Cat Caples for WNL taking up those duties. Gonna be another draw control one by the home team. Comes into today sporting a six and eight record, four and two in the ODAC. That's the more important mark. Has them currently in a tie with Shenandoah for third in the conference standings. A battle that obviously heating up down the stretch here. Lynchburg trying to work it to Kennedy again. Ground ball battled for, scooped up Daniel. Possession continues. A lot of hustle and a big sense of urgency from Lynchburg, 
Now into the fourth quarter, getting that first goal on the board just about 30 seconds into things. Perfect one for one shooting in this period. Here's Morris looking for some space. Nothing doing right now. Good defense again from Washington and Lee. They've made things very difficult, especially over the past three stanzas. Tory King there trying to scoop that one up. See what word comes down from the officials. Just going to be a reset for Lynchburg. No free position. Sullivan will continue the possession. Again, back to that point. Very important conference battle Lynchburg finds itself in. Top four teams getting a bye out of the first round of the ODAC tournament. That is currently includes Lynchburg right now. They also get a home game to start a second round. Battle far side. I'm going to say last touch by Washington and Lee. Kennedy and Lynchburg scoop it up and another Full shot clock to work with. She hits the turf there. It collided a tad. WNL's number seven. Jenny Taylor, active all day today. Another reset here. This time it's Daniel. That's outside to Neely Morris. Her shot denied. Whistle came down first. Possession will go to Washington and Lee. Maddie Coleman down below, certainly pointing the direction of her team. She'll be happy to get the ball again here and set up another offensive possession. Washington and Lee will look to respond to the early fourth quarter goal from Lynchburg. Generals figured something out offensively there. In that third quarter, I have to imagine a lot of that can just be attributed to some tired legs from the Lynchburg defense. Patricia Rogers comes up with another save there. Should be her eighth of the game. Hanging right around that 50% mark. She came in to this contest with Doherty. Dropped that one momentarily. Looked like she scooped it up, but we'll turn it back over to Washington and Lee. Here's Bishop. Eyeing another goal, passes inside, close shot, scored on by Claire Horner. And the sophomore from Richmond, Virginia, pushes the Washington and Lee lead right back up to six. Bishop keeping her eyes up, finds her teammate coming from behind the goal. Gets the jump on Meredith Bornholt. One-on-one -on -one opportunity against Patricia Rogers there in the goal. Rogers stopped that initial shot coming down from the Generals, but second effort after the turnover comes up with a different result. Balls up from the draw. Two Hornets, two Generals in the area. Possession's going to go to Lynchburg. Al Daniel might have gotten a little dinged up on that one. Daniel will start things off here. Working against Bishop out in the open field. Passes backwards to Bornholt. She keys it up across midfield to Tory King. Back to Daniel, and Lynchburg clears. Daniel goes inside. Taking a little bit of contact there is Neely Morris. Scooping up the ball there was Caroline Wise. She's a little disappointed that it would not be another offensive possession for Washington and Lee. Instead, golden opportunity here for Lynchburg. Free position coming up. Neely Morris shot and again stopped by Caroline Kranick. She's been great today. Faced 10 shots on goal, saved six of them. It's been tough for Lynchburg if they've been able to get past the initial Washington and lead defensive wall. They've had a lot of trouble 
getting past the second level of Kranick in goal. Hornets draw up a little closer on the shot disparity after that last one. Still trail Generals by 12 in the game, 27 to 15. Nifty little pass there to Bishop, whose shot bounces in, but a whistle was blown before that shot went off. Frustration a little bit from the WNL offense. I'm sure Bishop would have been fine with the result as is, but they'll have to try again. Will be on the free position, and I believe it will be Bishop. Bishop and Rogers for WNL goal number 11. Comes up, stopped by Rogers. Battle for it on the ground, going to be scooped up by Schwab. Stay on this end of the field. Mentioned this is the final road game of the year for WNL. Got a big ODAC game against Bridgewater coming up, and then May 2nd, game against Denison. The last coaching stop from New Generals head coach Matty Coleman. Bishop here thought she had a goal momentarily on this possession, and it wiped off. Whistle blows down again. It feels like something on most possessions here. It's going to be another free position. Once again, it's going to be Bishop. This time she does not rush the goal, just takes it from where she stood. It goes off wide left. Lynchburg gets out of that possession. Rodgers, though she did not technically make a save there, eight of them on 18 shots on goal from the visitors. That pass from Wheeler going to be broken up by Bishop. Hurrying back into the goal is Rodgers, but not going to be able to set things up quite in time. Washington and Lee will score this time off the stick of Alex Petrus. Take a look at it again. She comes up, gets by Bornholt. Lynchburg actually had numbers there at two to one. But they were back on their heels after the turnover in their own half of the field. Just not sure that Patricia Rodgers was able to set things up quite in time, get comfortable in goal and capitalizing on it. Is Petrus, it'll draw a Lynchburg timeout, second of this half. We will take it with them one more time. 8.38 to go in the fourth. Take a break by telling you the score. Washington and Lee 11, Lynchburg 4. This video isn't about me. It's about the limitless possibilities that the University of Lynchburg allows me to be. An athlete. An artist. An adventurer. A writer. A believer. A human. Because what I love about the University of Lynchburg is that they have a saying, here we're home. And honestly though, I think a better fit would be a home for everyone. Because it doesn't matter the color of your skin, the person you love, the God you pray to, the pronouns you use, the city you're from, the language you speak. University of Lynchburg gives you the greatest opportunity they can for you to be the absolute best version of yourself. Washington and Lee, the second-ranked team in the country, in a very favorable spot right now, up by seven. Largest lead of the game for the visiting Generals. One final road test on the season. They look to clinch the number one overall seed in the ODAC postseason tournament. Do so with a win. Right. 
Lynchburg on the other side has already clinched its trip to that ODAC tournament. It will be a matter of seeding. And again, a big game coming up for Lynchburg on the road at Virginia Wesleyan. Assuming this score holds, Hornets will be four and three. It'll break the tie between them and Shenandoah. So a big game for seeding purposes, but likely see Lynchburg sitting in the fourth position when they travel east and take on the Marlins of Virginia Wesleyan. Washington Lee will once again set up offensively. They were a little slow offensively in the first half. That was thanks in large part to the Lynchburg defense. It's continued to play well again. You know, we've mentioned at length, Washington Lee team averaging over 20 goals a game in ODAC contests, only 11 today. So a great game put together from that side of the field from Lynchburg. But again, Generals doubling up Lynchburg in the shots department, 30 to 15. It's gonna be tough to overcome no matter who the opponent is, but when it's somebody, as many threats offensively as Washington Lee has, as Petrus is looking for a second one there, have another free position. It's been another notable point here for the visitors, something they've been able to capitalize on just Racking up those free opportunities. They're able to prolong this possession. Now you can really just start to think about running a lot of time off the clock too. That's bigger adversary for Lynchburg maybe even than the deficit itself. Gonna get another Free possession here. Free possession, excuse me. Coming up for the score. It will roll slowly across the goal line. Rogers tried to put herself in position to stop it, but it just continues on its trajectory across the goal line and in. Scoring is Jenny Lasevich once again. Throw of the stick there in celebration. Washington and Lee lead continues to grow now. It's those tired legs certainly coming into play on the Lynchburg side of things, giving a lot of fight throughout this game, probably more so than the current goal disparity shows. But again, I have to remember one of the best teams in the country, Middlebury reigning national champs, has held the number one spot in the IWLCA poll for most of the season. But Washington and Lee just climbing its way up. This is a team that has finished in the national ranking each of the last three seasons. As high as number four in the COVID shortened 2020 campaign and then a trip to the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight in each of the ensuing seasons. And last year it was a 19 and three record ODAC championship, one of the best postseason finishes in program history, and of course, another unblemished conference record. And I'll be looking for number 100 in a row, assuming this score holds over the final six and a half minutes when they take on Bridgewater April 26th in midweek action this upcoming week. That'll be a seven o'clock. First whistle. There's McKnight passing off to Schwab. Had a good day. There has number three. Now cutting inside, making the save again there. Well, looks like Rogers made the save. Ball ricochets back out. Stays with Washington and Lee. Let's see if that actually goes down in the stat book as the 10th Rogers save of the afternoon. Credit to her, as it stands right now, 18 saves against the pair of ranked opponents that have come to Schellenberger Field this year. Washington and Lee and Roanoke. Bit of a fake there 
Didn't get what she wanted. Passed out. Whistle blows. That was Julia Thompson passing back outside to McKnight. But it will be Thompson taking the free position here. Sporting an eight-goal lead for Washington and Lee. Comes up. Makes it happen. Dinged off of the outside post. But will ricochet back in. See if we can get the angle on it. Just snuck it. I mean, Rogers pretty much right where she needed to be. That's a tight window to fit it inside. So a lot of credit on that shot to Julia Thompson. Taking advantage of the free one. Giving WNL its 13th goal of the day. Meanwhile, Lynchburg continuing to be stuck on four. One goal in each the third and fourth quarters. And this would be the lowest point total of the year scored by Lynchburg if they do not come up with another one. It currently is five in a 16-5 loss against Christopher Newport in late March. An offense that has heated up recently. 16 goals against Randolph Macon, 17 against Farum, 17 against Randolph, and 15 against Aver. That's each of their four conference wins. Washington and Lee has put together a complete game here today. Done it on the offensive and defensive ends. Looking for another one. That's going to bounce off the stick of Rogers. Back to the outside, corralled by Emma Marsh. Washington and Lee four and a half minutes away from securing its second perfect season on the road in the last three years. It's been a heck of a start to Maddie Coleman's tenure at the helm of, again, one of the best programs in the country in Washington and Lee. Crossfield pass there, a little too high. Stopped and scooped up by Thompson. Last goal scorer for WNL. That ball knocked loose by Jade Mayer. The contact warranted a whistle from the official. Won't be a free position, but a little bit of space to work with now for Thompson. Mayer's got to give her some space. Not a terrible look at the goal from where she stands right now. Washington Lee now approaching its scoring average of 15 goals a game. That shot, get him one closer. Thompson comes up, makes it happen. That's goal number 14. We will now have a running clock for the final 316 of this game. It's Julia Thompson. Take a look at it again. That's a great shot. Going from high to low. Most of the time, it seems like when you see those high-low shots, it's a bounce, bouncing attempt that time. It's cleanly into the net. Lynchburg coaches urging their team to move back over to the draw circle. It's a lengthy conversation. Again, mentioned running clock that is now seen over 45 seconds run off it since that goal was scored. This loss will drop Lynchburg to six and nine, four and three in ODAC play. Still not in a bad spot when it comes to the conference standings with one game remaining on the slate. We will have to wait to officially see if we get another home game for this Lynchburg women's team. Been fun to watch 
all season long on Schellenberger Field. They wind up as the four, five, six, or seven seed, excuse me, four, five, or six seed. They will secure at least one home game in that tournament. It'll just be important to shake this result off. It's Brianna Benoit. Draws contact there. Going to be a free position opportunity for her. Also drew a large cheer from the sideline. Benoit, not too many appearances this season. She will be denied. Got a pretty good look at it up close against Rodgers. She's looking for her fifth goal of the season. And Benoit only appearing. This is her fourth game of the year. Got the ball again right now. This is off to Betty Boatwright. So a couple starters in there for Washington Lee, but quite a few reserves now out there as well. Allie Schwab looks like her day is done. Same for Walker McKnight. So we run off the final 30 seconds of this clock. 15 seconds left on the shot clock here for Washington Lee looking for that 15th goal. Coming down, looking for it was Sophie Edwards. She's gotten several pretty good looks at it on the day. Just hadn't found pay dirt. Trisha Rogers scoops up the ground ball with 16 to go. And it will be one more stop for the Lynchburg defense. They will hold Washington and Lee under its season average of 15 goals per game. Time will run off on this one. And the Generals streak extends to 99 games. Another perfect season away from home. They improve to 14 and 1 on the year. And a very impressive, unblemished 7 and 0 mark in conference play. Again, Lynchburg drops to 4 and 3 in the conference. Still plenty to play for and a big matchup coming up in the midweek against Virginia Wesleyan. But we will again wait to see if we will get any more home action from this Lynchburg women's lacrosse team. As for now, I want to extend a very warm thank you to our entire LHSN crew, many of whom sticking around for both games of today's doubleheader, the men's and women's teams both in action on a rare occasion. I'll tell you one more time, I am Sam Graham. It's been fun coming to you all season long. Hope we get to do it one more time, but until then, have a good one.